Hello there, welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be talking about an 88 films release, Shaw Brothers, starring Alexander Fusheng and Chi Quan Chun. And this is Disciples of Shaolin. Again, another film that I've never actually seen much till recently, well, until this release anyway. Um, we're going to so getting into details a bit about the history of the film, uh, the actors in this film, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, if it's a good kung fu movie worth checking out. And yeah, Disciples of Shaolin. So basically, um, just quick side note on this, obviously with this being a slipcase, special edition slipcase, um, um, 88 films release, you get booklet notes, um, you get you get a double-sided fold out poster, HD remaster, audio commentaries, all the good stuff. All the good stuff is on there. So yeah, we'll just get into this now. Um, another film directed by Chang Chi, as I mentioned in my previous video for The Flag of Iron, um, you know, responsible for so many classics from the Shaw Brothers studio back in the day, um, from the heyday of like Kung Fu cinema. Um, you're talking films like I say, Five Then Ends, One Armed Swordsman, Boxer from Shantung, that kind of thing. Um, and we're just, like I say, we'll just get into this film now and just tell you a bit about the actors, who's in it, and you know, what the film involves. I will try to keep spoilers down to a minimum because um, I know some of you might, you know, never heard of this film or even who Alexander Fusheng is, also known as just Fusheng. Um, and as I say, just give you a bit of a history, my brief overview of him. And um, yeah, we'll get into that now. So he, Alexander Fusheng was a well-known figure from the classic Shaw Brothers era of movies. I mean, I personally always remember him from like Chinatown Kid, Brave Archer, and Eight Diagram Pole Fighter by Lu Chao Lung. Um, which unfortunately Fu Shang tragically never ever got to complete. Um, it was a film he was working on at the time. Um, this was his last film that he was in, and he um, tragically died in a car crash. Um, just at the young age of twenty eight, and I think it was I think it was nineteen eighty three time. I think it that's when it was. Um, but please correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, but he, yeah, he was filming Eight Diagram Pole Fighter and. Basically, he was going to be the lead in this film, along with Gordon Liu, Liu Chia Hoi, and uh, unfortunately had that horrific car accident, um, fatal car accident, I should say, and they had to sort of change the end of the film because Fu Shang was meant to be the hero, but he was one of these guys, Fu Shang, he had so much charisma on camera, he really, when he was on camera, he just really, the camera loved him, and he, I think he was, at one point I did read somewhere, he was even rumoured to be in Snake and Eagle Shadow, um, you know, you can definitely see a lot of you, that sort of Jackie Chan charisma about Fu Shang. Like he really, any role he's in, he really does dominate the role. He he could have had, he had so much potential, Fu Shang, and such a short-lived career. And to be taken so soon was really tragic, as I say. But um, yeah, unfortunately, Fu Shang's body of work is not overly expansive. Um, but yeah, we'll get back into that. Um he was basically Luke Chalung, as mentioned before, who was directing uh, Eight Guy Grand Pole Fighter. He choreographs all the fight scenes and the set pieces in this film. And he'd done films, if you're not familiar with him, like 36 Chamber of Shaolin, which is regarded to be one of the greatest kung fu movies of all time. He'd done um, Mad Monkey Kung Fu, My Young Auntie, Dirty Ho. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Um, I mean, Fu Shang, again, if you're speaking to if, assuming like I say you've maybe never seen many Fu Sheng films or you know knowledge in him isn't that great he really shines in this film as this arrogant young hero and in which I consider probably one of his best roles one, definitely one of his better roles because he, he's really you can tell he is really applying himself to this you can tell he is really making the most of this role and say Chi Kuan Chun also shares top billing but he doesn't actually get much screen time it's mainly left to Fu Sheng um it who sort of carries this movie all the way through and rightly so because as I say he really is what I would consider one of his best performances if you've ever like if you compare it to some of his other work which is all exceptional um, but if you look at this film in particular it really does allow him to get his acting you know get some acting across on you know within the story and unlike many kung fu films of the era, which was usually sort of, even though this film can be seen as somewhat sort of a generic plot, or you can look at it as like, it's not really, yeah, okay, same old, same old. It, but if you look at it from the flip side, with us, so without getting too in depth with the plot and what is involved, um, it actually has a point, this film. I mean, that can be related even to this day of workers being ex like exploited or an unfeeling boss who doesn't care about his employees. And um, basically, the owner of this. This factory, the hero, like Fu Sheng, 
he cares more about fighting insects. He, like, he basically collects crickets, and he cares more about them than he does his own workers. He's one of them films that, as long as he's all right, he's not worried. Let the workers do whatever they want. You know, he's not worried if the workers fight with other workers, get killed, whatever. As long as he's got money and he can look after his crickets. And there's a great analogy there that, towards the end of the film, you realise that Fusheng was actually just one of his crickets. He was just sort of something he could play with and just... It, it really does depend on how deep... I mean, maybe I'm looking at it too deep, I don't know. Um, ironic, it can, like I say, it can be a sort of a parallel there to how he views his workers. He lets them fight amongst themselves. And then, although the action is not as frequent as one may like it, it really does, allow, like I say, allow Fusheng to shine and come through as an actor. Um, allowing, like I say, his acting chops to really come through. And the the irony of this film, basically you have this other, you know, uh, textile mill that is trying to pinch the workers from the mill that Fu Shang works out. Works out. And it turns out like the guy who's trying to pinch the workers he actually sort of cares more about his staff than this the place where Fu Shang works. It's it's a, it's one of the things if you look at it quite deeply, there's a very interesting sort of dynamic um, sort of message there with this film which might be missed or lost on some people um, and despite the title Disciples of Shaolin it had, basically has nothing to do with Shaolin other than the style used by one of the heroes at moments in the film it has that classic kung fu backdrop though as I say to this film the textile mill for a story of greed business rivalry, corruption you know the usual kind of plot devices that appear in many many kung fu films and basically and fu sheng is down and out of his luck gets a job at a textile mill um, where he becomes the boss's right hand man and gets corrupted and alienate his friends along the way because he's good at kung fu and the boss says we can use you and he basically sort of works his way up and he basically just lost track along the way of who he was and you know his morals and that kind of thing and Fong Hak On, I will mention, regarding sort of other people in this film, um, who many will know as a villain from sort of films like Warriors 2, Police Story, Magnificent Butcher. He's in the film as one of the villains. And whilst, the, like I say, the final film doesn't come maybe as freaking or of Austin as one would like it, it's one of them films where, like I say, if you look at the bigger scope of the narrative, that it truly shines through this film. It really... It's one of the films that on it, you will probably enjoy it a lot more on second viewing. Like you, the second time you watch it, once you know sort of the whole layout of how the film is and the way it works, um, you, you'll sort of I think you'll enjoy it a lot more the second time through. And it's what, like I say, the message that's come through. So although, um, like I say, it's a kung fu movie, it's a very important one. It really is about staff being exploited and um, you, know, you know terrible work conditions and managers and bosses not caring about your welfare and um, things like that. As I say, it's, it's one of the films that university can still be applied even now and resonate even to this day. Um, the ending to this film may um, again spoilers. So if you if you don't want many spoilers, um then please stop watching the video right now. I mean, I'd like to keep watching, but if you do stop watching, that's fine. Um, and the ending, I found this film incredibly tragic, really tragic. Um, it was, it's, you know, you can imagine in the day, um, Fu Sheng, obviously, very, very good looking, charming guy. Um, and it, it was bizarre as well, the end of this film. I mean, bear in mind how big Fu Sheng was or the up and coming he was. And it was a really emotional punch at the end, I'm say, spoiler warning. That he gets killed um and it really did surprise me um as i was not expecting it at all i really was not expecting it at all i mean like i said where he got corrupted and his moral compass was sort of flipped and things like that i thought he was sort of you expecting him to maybe see the error of his ways and turn it around but no he gets murdered and basically sort of pays the price for selling his soul and the ultimate greed like all the greed he had and basically chi kwa chun has to sort of avenge him and get justice in like the last five ten minutes of the film and it's it's very and it's really odd that it goes to sort of like a tarantino a lot of people if you've seen it like tarantino does it in kill bill where it goes to black and white when he's actually sort of being murdered and a lot of people say there's two sides while this happens like some people like when the film changes color when there's um sort of a bloody fight scene a lot of people say there have been arguments that it's it was Chang Chi being artistic and just trying trying to create a sense of mood and things like that. The other side of it as well, like sometimes when films were set 
the color was changed and the tone of the film was changed it allowed them it allowed them to sort of get past distributors in certain countries and it allowed them to be shown in certain theaters because like actually the blood sort of wasn't actually being shown as the color it was type of thing um so that's was tarantino sort of homage to that in kill bill volume one when it goes black and white the house of blues um it's worth now this film was actually remade in 1993 by Johnny Toe and the film is entitled The Barefooted Kids and um, it's because um, Fu Sheng's character makes a big deal in this film about his shoes like when the manager says you can have anything you want what would you like what would you like and he's like I'd like some new shoes and the shoes in this film are a great sort of metaphor both for his past and like the new him this horrible new him that's become but yeah it was remade by Johnny Toe back in 1993 I think it was 93 and it starred T. Lung, Maggie Chung and um, you know pop sensation Aaron Kwok um so just quickly sort of to wrap this up disciples as i say it's a great piece of work by chen chi and with a fantastic performance by alexander fusheng and although like i said the action is not all that frequent it is a nice to watch film that has a moral message um about greed and corruption as i say with a kung fu backdrop and fantastic fight scenes directed by Liu kaolung that even though it may not be his best is still he often worked with Chung, Chang Chi a few times before he went on to be a director himself. And I think this was sort of one of the last films they made together before Liu Ka Lung went on to be sort of director in his own right. So this was film was made in 1975. Um, yeah, but just say, go and check it out. I say, go and check it out for something different, something that's a bit more sort of what would I call different from the norm to your average Kung Fu movies and just enjoy Alexander Fusheng in one of his best roles. Check it out.